Color libraries are designed for commercial printing. Each library is a matching system for a particular brand of ink a print shop is using. Choosing colors this way allows you to be super accurate about color and is great for company logos and spot colors to ensure that you're using the exact color that you need to use for your project. Another way to choose colors from a library, in addition to the swatches panel, is to access the color picker by clicking on the color squares on the tools panel or the color panel. And so we said earlier that anytime you see the left and right square, and in our example it's the black square on the left and the white square on the right, um, you can click either the foreground or background color to launch the color picker. And so we talked about it specifically on the tools panel, but it's on the color panel as well. Once you open the color picker, whether it's the foreground color or the background color, um, you will open the color picker dialog box and then you can choose the option that says color libraries. It's over here on the right hand side. A new dialog box will launch which allows you to make decisions about your color or choose your color library. And if you hit the book drop down menu, which mine is set to Pantone Solid Coded right now, you'll see all the different matching systems or color libraries that are pre-installed in Photoshop. These aren't the only libraries you can use, you can install additional libraries if you wanted to. Most of the ones that are common for graphic artists are already pre-installed and so you'll see a number of Pantone ones because Pantone is pretty much industry standard in the graphics industry. Find the color you want to work with, in my case it was Pantone 2612C, and then select OK. It will then adjust the color picker and let you know the color you chose. So I chose Pantone 2612C, and when I come back to the color picker, um, it will say that that color is a purple color, and it is 64% cyan, 100% magenta, 11% yellow, and 1% black. This just allows me to choose the color. If I use this method of choosing a color from a color library, I am just using that color, and if I choose to output my project as a CMYK uh, process blend or printing process colors, this color will be produced using cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Just because you choose a Pantone color does not mean you choose a spot color. Spot colors are developed different uh, in Photoshop, and you will learn about that at the end of this lecture. You can take it one step further after you choose your color if you know that you want to use this color over and over and over in your project. Um, you can hit the Add to Swatches option within the Color Picker dialog, so you don't have to go to the Swatches panel to add it. And so when in doubt, I say go ahead and add the swatch. Um, worst case scenario, you have a bunch of swatches that you only use once, but you might come across a color that you end up using over and over, and having the swatch saved will save you a lot of time. There are a couple newer ways to look or choose color, look at or choose color in Photoshop. The first is called Adobe Color Themes. And so with Adobe Photoshop CC, you can work with Adobe Color Themes. You can use it to create and edit your own uh, colors. You can explore uh, color palettes that other designers have put together. You can see that over here. They're called color themes. You can uh, figure out what colors look nice with the color you're working with and so sometimes we get stuck and we find a color we want to work with maybe it's this blue color here and then we can't find colors that look good with it you can use the Adobe color themes to explore how um, maybe complementary colors sync up to that or um, triad colors and different color themes to access this you can go to the Adobe color theme website or from inside uh, InDesign, Photoshop and Illustrator and possibly other Adobe programs you can open it via the window menu. In Photoshop you would choose the window menu and then the extension option which currently in Adobe Photoshop CC 2018 is right at the top so they're all alphabetical except for this it's at the top of, of the drop down menu. When you hit extensions, you'll see that you can launch Adobe Color Themes, and it will launch a new panel for you to play around with. The only downside of this is it's connected to the internet, and so if you're not connected to the internet, this panel will never fully load. It will process and look like it's spinning, and then the image will never pop through. Um, it's because it's connected to the internet, and so if you're at home and it's working, and then you unplug your computer and you go sit in the park in the summer to work on your coursework, and you're not connected to the internet, you should know that is why you can't use this panel. If you'd like to learn more about Adobe Color Themes, you can click on the link at the bottom of the slide here, or just go to adobe.com and search for Adobe Color Themes, and their page will come up. They've got a couple of videos that are pretty cool that explain how you can use it for your projects. Along that same wavelength, Adobe Capture is another new thing that Adobe's come out with. 
they came out with a series of apps. So if you go to the Apple App Store or the Google Play App Store and you search for Adobe, they have tons of little apps that you can, you can get for free now and download. The Adobe Capture one is pretty cool because it's a mobile app that can be used to create color themes. When you sign into it with your Adobe.com account, which is free, so if you have Adobe CC subscription, you have an Adobe.com account. But even if you don't have a subscription, you can go to Adobe.com and register for an account. And then that will give you access to color themes and shapes, patterns, brushes, etc. You can then, whatever you capture and use inside the app, you can save them to your Adobe CC library if you have an Adobe CC account. And then when you open Photoshop or Illustrator or InDesign and you open the library panel, you should be able to pull from these resources. If you'd like to learn more about Adobe Capture, you can click on the image. Um, it'll take you to a video. Or you can click on the word Capture down here, and it will take you to Adobe.com's Adobe Capture help page, which has information on Adobe Capture and also has some videos that you can watch.